So, if I said to you, let's play a game, what would you think of? Would you think of Fortnite? Minecraft, perhaps? Or maybe you would think of Mario Kart? Well, that's not what I was thinking of. When I was little, the games I used to play did not involve electricity at all. No, I'm not a hundred years old. However, some of the games that we play outside today are, and some are even their thousands and thousands of years old. Now, I would like to show you something interesting. Did you know there are lots of games that we play that our ancestors played? And I think some of you may be shocked at how old they may be. So let's follow the footsteps of history and play without the need for power. This is one of my favourite paintings. It's called Children's Games and was painted in 1560, three years before Queen Elizabeth I became Queen. How many of the games do you recognise? Perhaps ask your parents or your grandparents if they ever played any of these games. What shocked me the first time I saw this painting is that I didn't think that anyone had time to play back then, let alone to have fun, but it seems that they did. Some are having fights and playing rough, but there are children playing games like marbles, dolls, hobby horse, doing handstands and roly polies, and also playing run the gauntlet. A game not many of us play anymore is Blind Man's Buff. Originally played over 2,000 years ago in Greece, it was obviously still popular in the Elizabethan times and there is also an entry in the diary of Samuel Pepys two years before the Great Fire of London where he describes playing a game of blind man's buff with his wife and other family members. Hopscotch was invented by the ancient Romans. They did not use it for fun though. It was used as a training method for the Roman army. They were made to do hopscotch in their full armour with weapons. Not sure I fancy the idea of hopscotch in armour. There are some pretty amazing preserved hopscotches you can still see nowadays, and there are many variations of the hopscotch, including a French version known as escargot because it resembles a snail. Now, some of the hopscotches that the Roman army used to use were over a hundred foot long. Can you imagine having to exercise on that? Although they didn't do hopscotch for fun, they did enjoy playing board games, but they mostly played them outside. There are many relics of games that have been etched into the Roman benches and other outdoor areas. Now, I wonder what the Romans would think of Monopoly. It's possible that in ancient times they also played card games, but as they would have been made out of paper, there are no remains left to show us how they did it, or what they used. However, they did use stones for a lot of games, but many of those have also been worn down and weathered with time. The Roman Emperor Augustus used to play marbles using rounded nuts. Other round things from nature were also used. Engraved marbles have also been found in ancient mounds built by early North American Indian tribes. There is also evidence that Egyptians loved to play marbles as well. Maybe you're a kite flyer, like Sonny. 2,800 years ago in China, the Chinese invented the first kite. The first kite, however, was made of wood, and I'm guessing you wouldn't be too happy if one landed on your head. Later, paper ones were made, and they were used as early warning systems, especially during the siege of Nanjing. Or how about skipping? Ancient Egyptians and Greeks used to skip, but instead they used long sticks or rods more often than rope. Modern skipping was originally a game played in groups, and there are many songs that have been sung while skipping. Single person rope skipping was only invented as an exercise for prize fighters, but now many of us do it. Perhaps you're more of a thinker and would have preferred a game of chess. The ancient Egyptians loved a good board game. They often played a game called Senate and an early version of chess. The chess we know today, however, was invented in the 6th century and the pieces designed in the medieval times to represent powerful members of the medieval society. I bet some of you have been to the park before. A quick game of football, perhaps in the style of the ancient Chinese military, or a Japanese game of Kamari. That's keepy up to you and me. Now, the first use of the word football can be found in a book written in 1409.
A quick go on the swing before we head home? Now that's a good idea. There's evidence that swings were used by ancient Greeks in Crete in 3,600 odd years ago. So next time you're sat on a swing, imagine yourself swinging in the ruins of ancient Greece.